Hello, grade 12 psychology class. Welcome back to another lecture. We have lesson two, classical conditioning part two. Uh, it's a continuation. It has some um, uh, very interesting topics, all really listed here in the key points if you would like to uh, refer to those. Here we go. Uh, so we have generalization, generalization and discrimination, which is just key point one here. Um, so this is all in the same set of experiments uh, we talked about in part one. Pavlov also explored the process of generalization and discrimination. So generalization occurs when an animal responds to a stimulus that's similar to the original condition stimulus without prior training with that stimulus. So maybe they react also to a different uh, tone of a bell or a different tuning fork or a horn instead of a bell. Uh, maybe it's any sound that uh, comes from the farmer in like that kind of pitch or around that time. They generalize sounds essentially. It doesn't have to be the exact same whistle, the exact same sound every single time. Um, so essentially the dog wouldn't be able to tell between this circle and this oval. You know, they both have round edges, they're about the same size. The dog would take them to be the same. Um, when Pavlov conditioned a dog to salivate at the side of a circle, right here, he found that the dog would also salivate when he saw an oval. Oh, okay, like it, would, it couldn't discriminate or it had generalized its response to include these two stimuluses. So generalizing and discrimination are two sides of the same coin. It had, dem it had uh, generalized this or was unable to discriminate between these two shapes. Pavlov was later able to do the opposite, teaching the dog to respond only to the circle by always pairing meat powder with the circle, but never pairing it with the oval. He thus taught the dog to discriminate, or he taught the dog discrimination, the ability to respond differently to different stimuli. So maybe after uh, a different tone of a bell, you would not give meat powder eventually, the dog would realize that that tone did not mean food and would not um, salivate at that time. So acquisition. Acquisition of a classically conditioned response gener uh, occurs gradually. Uh, with each pairing of the conditioned stimulus with the unconditioned uh, stimulus with the conditioned response, um, that, that response gets strengthened, essentially. So acquisition is a gradient. You can uh, acquire it a little bit or you can be like very good at it and acquire it a lot in Pavlov's experiment the more frequently the tuning fork was paired with the food uh, the more often the tone brought about the salivation or the conditioned response so if you teach your dog to shake a paw and you teach shaking a paw with a treat uh, if you do not make that connection uh, with the word uh, and shaking a paw enough the dog will eventually uh, not want to do it if it's not given a treat uh, or might not do it every single time if that pairing isn't strong enough. So that's what acquisition means. It needs to be done a lot over a long period of time to make a difference. Uh, it also matters the timing of the association between the conditioned stimulus and the unconditioned stimulus. Um, so the tone and the food had to be close together. Uh, Pavlov tried several conditioning procedures in which he varied the time between presenting the conditioned stimulus and the unconditioned stimulus. And the closer together that you paired them, uh, that you gave them, the stronger the acquisition was. So you want to give the dog the treat immediately as, uh, as soon as they've shaken your paw and as soon as you said the word to make sure that that connection uh, is made. If you wait, uh, the more time you wait, the less likely that the dog is able to acquire that skill. And the same thing happens with humans, but we'll just talk about dogs for now. So he found that classical conditioning was most reliable and effective when the conditioned stimulus was presented just before the unconditioned stimulus. He found that presenting the, pr uh, the conditioned stimulus about half a second before the unconditioned stimulus would yield the strongest association between the tuning fork and the meat. Again, as close together essentially as you can. Um, extinction, which is key point three. 
uh, is that he discovered after he stopped presenting the food after the sound, the sound would eventually lose its effect. So if you stop giving your dog treats, eventually the dog will not want to shake a paw anymore. You will not expect, you expect not to get a treat and won't want to do it. So Pavlov called this effect extinction because the conditioned response uh, gradually died out. Even though a classically conditioned response may be extinguished, it doesn't mean that the conditioned response has been unlearned. It just means that the uh, organism won't do that thing because there is no reward. It doesn't expect a reward anymore. Um, so like this cartoon says, in classical conditioning, extinction occurs when the conditioned uh, and unconditioned stimulus are no longer paired. So it is essentially the bells become meaningless to the dog because we've stopped giving him meat powder every time we rang the bell and now he's just like angry at us every time we ring the bell because we don't give him meat powder anymore. Spontaneous recovery, and that's key point four, is when there's a rest period given following extinction. Um, the conditioned response may reappear when the condition stimulus is presented again, um, even though you don't give the, the meat powder or the unconditioned stimulus uh, as well. So uh, you the, the spontaneous recovery doesn't bring it back to regular strength, but maybe after a month when you ask the dog to shake the paw again, it'll do it, expecting that maybe this time, if I do it, it'll get a treat, or it forgets that it doesn't get a treat once you've given, uh, once it's shaken a paw. So Pavlov's dogs produced much less saliva during the spontaneous recovery than they did at the end of their original conditioning, which is why he said it does not bring it back to regular strength. Uh, if you want to bring it back to regular strength, you'll have to do more training, uh, more treats uh, right after you ask them to shake a paw, but um, this process will most likely be quicker as you relearn it. So conditioning. Does he hear the bell? Here comes my food, says the dog. Very happy doggo running towards the food. Extinction will happen when there is no food given when the bell rings. To heck with your bell, says the doggo. But spontaneous recovery may happen after a while when there is a bell. Even if there's no food given, the dog may forget and um, associate it with food right away. So we have an interested doggo here. Uh, we have important terms for you for your job and then we have an assignment for you to read and to do questions on and as always if you have questions uh, please let me know uh, or talk to someone in class or send me an email but thanks so much for watching everyone and I'll see you soon